After weeks of close combat in the dense Normandy hedgerows, advancing only yards per day since D-Day, Lieutenant General Omar Bradley, commander of 1st U.S. Army, was determined to break through the German lines into more favorable terrain. In July 1944, Bradley developed a bold plan for a new offensive, Operation Cobra. This is World War II in two. I am Mark Calhoun from the National World War II Museum in New Orleans. Cobra would be a powerful offensive on a narrow front. A massive aerial bombardment would precede the attack, striking a rectangular target area with its long axis parallel to the Perrier St. Lowe Highway. To maximize the bomb's shock effect, Bradley approved a safety margin of only 1,200 yards from the front line to the north edge of the target area, believing that the highway would guide the bombers accurately to their target. However, things did not go as planned. On July 24th, despite poor weather, the attack began. The smaller bombers met low clouds and most did not drop their bombs. When the heavy bombers arrived, approaching from the north, a bombardier unintentionally dropped his bomb load 2,000 yards north of the highway. The 15 other bombers in the flight followed suit, raining destruction on the American front lines. When the dust settled, 25 soldiers from the 30th Infantry Division were killed and 131 others were wounded. Bradley intended for the bombers to approach the target area parallel to the highway, but the air planners changed the heavy bombers' flight path to a perpendicular approach to allow more bombers to strike the target simultaneously. While their logic was sound, the planners neglected to inform Bradley, who was furious when he saw the heavy bombers approaching from the north over the heads of First Army troops. The scale of the disaster disheartened Bradley, but he scheduled the Cobra offensive for the next morning, July 25th. Once again, poor visibility led to another disaster. Nearly 100 bombers released their loads short of the target, resulting in more than 100 soldiers killed and 490 wounded. Among those killed was Lieutenant General Leslie McNair, who was visiting the front. He was the senior American officer killed in the European theater of operations. Bradley doubted whether the offensive could continue, but his subordinate commanders realized that the bombardment had also devastated the German defenders. Troops of the U.S. 7th Corps pushed south of the highway on July 25th, forcing some enemy formations to retreat. By July 31st, the German front line disintegrated and the retreat turned into a rout, resulting in a comprehensive Allied victory in the Battle of Normandy.